Uh, this week, hundreds of thousands of students started classes at colleges and universities. And one thing is increasingly clear. By the time they graduate, most students are going to be leaving with a lot more than just a tacky polyester robe and a copy of Oh, The Places You'll Go that their te tearful aunt got them. <laughs> They'll be leaving with this. Seven of ten graduating students left college last year in debt. The total bill due for students in America tops one trillion dollars. That's right. Student debt in the U.S. is now bigger than debt from credit cards and auto loans and is second only to mortgages. Essentially, student debt is like HPV. If you go to college, you're almost certainly going to get it. <laughs> and if you do, it will follow you for the rest of your life. <laughs> because legally, student debt is a special kind of debt. It is the most collectible kind of debt there is. It is non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. They will garnish your wages. They will intercept your, your tax refunds. They, they, they will sue you in court. Oh, they won't stop there. They'll steal your wallet. They'll pawn your baby shoes. They will shrink themselves down to two inches high, hide in your pocket, and take that money back one dime at a time. <laughs> Student debt has tripled in the past decade. It has surpassed Bob Marley's greatest hits album as the thing seemingly every college student has. <laughs> How did this happen? Well, more than 90% of student debt is subsidised by the federal government. And it all started with such good intentions. Here is one of the federal student loan programme's early champions. Poverty must not be a bar to learning. And learning must offer an escape from poverty. Ah, escape from poverty. By the way, the single worst Kurt Russell movie ever made. <laughs> but... But, but a, a higher education system open to all was one of LBJ's top priorities, along with creating, of course, a Libyan pool party in Vietnam <laughs> and... and finding a pair of pants that could contain his gigantic testicles. <laughs> now, that last one might sound like a joke, but listen to this actual phone conversation that he had in the Oval Office <laughs> with a representative from the Hagar Clothing Company. The crotch down where your nuts hang is always a little too tight. So when you make them up, give me an inch that I can let out there uh, because they cut me. It's just like riding a, a wire fence. But see if you can't leave me about an inch from the, where the zipper ends uh, round uh, under my back to my bunghole. Real. Look, we all thought the B in LBJ stood for Baines, but it actually stands for Balls, Balls, My Big Bulbous Balls Are Too Close To My Bunghole. <laughs> Isn't history fun? Uh, but like LBJ's testicles, the federal student loan program has now swollen to uncomfortable proportions. <laughs> One reason for this might be that in recent years, states have slashed funding for higher education by 23%. Public institutions have responded by raising tuition rates, forcing students to take out ever larger loans. Why else do you think the colleges have so many f***ing a cappella groups? <laughs> they know they sound stupid, they just can't afford instruments anymore. <laughs> Another consequence of these cuts has been that some community colleges have been forced to reduce capacity leading to things like a nursing programme in North Carolina with a waiting list just to get on the waiting list. <laughs> because that is what you need in the land of tobacco and barbecue, a shortage of nurses. <laughs> but, but all this shows that people in this country, that they, they want to go to school to better their lives. And it is good that they have broad access to federal funds to help them do that. The problem is... This is where we meet one of the biggest drivers of student debt, for-profit schools, like University of Phoenix and ITT Tech. Most of them are publicly traded on Wall Street, and they run commercials like this. One evening, I was uh, watching TV, and then an ITT Tech commercial came on, and I decided to give them a call. I think my education has paid off tremendously. I got into the field of aerospace. It's been uh, over 12 years now. There's nothing I would change about my life. Uh, we've been married almost 10 years now. We have two beautiful boys. Everything is perfect. That's nice. Although, I will say, there's something about the phrase, everything is perfect, that I find inherently suspicious. 
Because the only other person who says that is Janice in accounting, and she secretly puts Jim Beam in her coffee cup <laughs> and repeats, keep you together, you can do this, Janice, into the bathroom mirror five times a day. <laughs> For-profit schools account for nearly a third of all student loans, despite having just 13% of our country's students. That is way out of proportion. And part of why for-profit schools account for so much student debt is that they are not cheap. I was surprised to learn how expensive tuition at the for-profits is. Five to six times the cost of a community college and as much as twice a four-year state university. Wow. Five to six times the cost of a community college. Plus, you don't even get to hang out with a study group full of lovable scamps for... for <laughs> For, let's say, for how long... For, for, let's say, six seasons in a movie. But <laughs> it, it, if you are wondering why they charge so much, it is nothing to do with the quality of education. If you take a look at for-profit colleges, the analysts will tell you that anywhere between 20 and 25% of the total revenue of the company is in sales and marketing. About a quarter. In most cases, the faculty are in the 10 to 20% range. They spend half the amount on teachers that they do on marketing. Think about that. He's basically saying, hey, teachers, we're not saying you don't matter. We're just saying ads about you matter twice as much. <laughs> no, one for you, two for a spot during Wayne Brady. That's about fair. <laughs> the thing is, from a purely business perspective, that disparity makes some kind of sense. When I go and buy perfume for my mom, the chemicals in the bottle, and the bottle itself amount to about 50 cents. The advertising amounts to five or six bucks. OK, for a start, <laughs> stop buying perfume for your mom, you <laughs> creep! <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you smell, Mom. <laughs> you smell good. <laughs> and secondly, Perfume is not education, although, I will say, both do market themselves aggressively. Now, with perfume, it's spraying it into people's eyes when they walk into a department <laughs> store. And for for-profit schools, it's actually even worse. Zara Crowley was a recruiter at the for-profit Westwood College in 2007. Crowley says she quit because she couldn't continue preying on low-income youth and using something called pain points. Pain point would be something, they work at McDonald's, they don't want to be like their parents. We'd turn it on them and say, I thought you wanted to do something with your life. Do you want to work at McDonald's for the rest of your life? Yeah. They are told to hit people's pain points. The only professionals who should be doing that are dominatrixes <laughs> or emo bands. That's it. <laughs> and this pain point approach seems to be an industry-wide technique. This is an actual slide some ITT tech recruiters were shown during training. That photo is from Marathon Man, where Laurence Olivier famously played a Nazi torturer. And it's maybe not saying much for your business model if your essential logic is, hey, guys, this works really well for the Nazis. Let's at least give it a go. <laughs> but if you do sign up for one of these schools, what kind of education are you going to get? Well, remember the ITT tech graduate from earlier and his absolutely perfect f***ing life? <laughs> well, well, it actually says on the screen that he graduated with an associate's degree in engineering from ITT's Silmar campus. Now, we checked their public filings, and out of 115 students who enrolled in that programme in the class of 2012, three quarters didn't graduate and only 13 found work in that field. Meaning everyone else would have genuinely been better off studying engineering at Hogwarts, because at least that way, <laughs> they'd have a fucking owl to show for it. <laughs> and even for those who do graduate, job hunting might be a little difficult, as students from a Corinthian College nursing program found. I've been on countless interviews and, um, they all ask if I've ever been in a hospital, and I would have to tell them, we never set foot in a hospital, ever. We went to a museum of Scientology for our psychiatric rotation. What? <laughs> Scientologists do not believe in psychiatry. Their museum is literally called Psychiatry and Industry of Death. 
Going to the Museum of Scientology for your psychiatric rotation is certifiably insane. <laughs> or evidence of a build-up of thetans in your system. It's... there's no... <laughs> it, 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 you teach the controversy. Now, now, full disclosure, we asked Corinthian about this, and they requested that we point out a few things, such as the fact that those women later sued the school, a financial settlement was reached, and that those women later went on to become registered nurses. And, and, and also, that us not mentioning those facts to you would constitute reckless disregard for the truth. I mean, <laughs> not the kind of reckless disregard for the truth that would lead you to send medical students to a f***ing Scientology <laughs> museum, but, you know, pretty reckless. Pretty reckless, <laughs> nonetheless. Also... They also, they also wanted us to take clear and extensive note of subsequent events. And interest of doing that, you should know that this summer, after a government investigation of their job placement numbers, Corinthian colleges have agreed to sell or close every school they operate in the US. I presume that that's what they wanted us to tell you, so <laughs> job done. Now, to, to be fair, to be fair here... We're good, we're good. Now, now to be fair here, the federal government does try to regulate these schools. They are only allowed a mere 90% of their funding to come from federal loans. However, for-profit schools have found themselves a truly horrifying loophole. The 90-10 rule says that the schools can only have 90% of their money coming from loans, but the other 10% could come from veteran loans. They exempted uh, the veterans' benefits, so these schools have gone after the veterans' benefits as a way to leverage their ability to, to sign up more students. They're going after veterans, and the only time going after veterans is OK is when you let them walk through the door in front of you, <laughs> not when you try to take their f***ing money. Now, for-profit schools took in $1.7 billion in GI Bill money in the last reported school year alone, and this is the length to which Ashford University was willing to go to get that sweet, sweet budget-assisting veteran dollar. I went to a marine base in North Carolina and I found that one of the for-profit colleges was sending a recruiter to the Wounded Warriors barracks where she was signing up uh, brain-injured Marines who uh, even had difficulty remembering what courses they were taking. Holy shit. I will say this for for-profit schools. They've just given us all a first-class education in the depths of human depravity. <laughs> we all have a diploma in that now. And he here is where I actually have some good news and some bad news for you. The good news is, a few years back, the Obama administration proposed tighter, gainful employment standards. The bad news is everything that happened after that. The for-profit industry spent $10 million in lobbying that year, and also, and this, thankfully, is a fun bit, their trade group inundated the government with thousands of letters from ordinary students and educators asking them not to tighten the regulations. And, and let me read one to you. It reads, I am a career college student at institution studying program. <laughs> institution is providing me with the education and training necessary to obtain the job I've always wanted as a career. <laughs> many, many people didn't even bother filling in the blanks. <laughs> at least have done it a bit like Mad Libs. You, you could have gone to Butt Cheese University <laughs> seeking a degree in wiener studies. Go the extra mile. And the worst thing is, the campaign worked. The gainful employment rules were weakened and eventually struck down completely. The latest version of the rules are expected by November, and the for-profit school trade group, APSCU, is still lobbying hard against them. And if you'd like to, um... Let APSCU know how you feel about their industry's behaviour. <laughs> We've actually prepared a form letter for you, which reads... <laughs> to whom it may concern, I am, name here, a human being with... Describe at least some level of sense, who is sick of your synonym for bullshit. <laughs> whatever the benefits... Whatever the benefits... Whatever the benefits of for-profit schools, your trade group is protecting some of the worst actors and additional insults, <laughs> ideas for places to cram this letter once rolled up, proposals for human waste products to be eaten. Thank you for your time. Name here again. Feel free. Feel free to go online, copy this letter, please do not bother to fill it in at all, and send it to Apsku at this address. And that might make you feel a little bit better, but...
it will only be temporary because the student debt problem is far bigger than just for-profit schools. If they all went away, student debt problem would still be here because our leaders have decided that while education is incredibly important, it is not important enough to actually pay for. So, <laughs> with that in mind, let me speak right now to all current freshmen in college <laughs> who have student loans. OK. <clears throat> You need to stop watching this show right now. <laughs> you don't have time for this. Get out there and enjoy the f out of your college experience <laughs> because you may be paying for it for the rest of your life. I am serious. Drink beer from a funnel. Uh, <laughs> kidnap a mascot. Uh, find out if you're gay or not. And <laughs> even if you are not, have some gay experiences. <laughs> Do it now. It doesn't count. Uh, become that weird guy on campus who rides a unicycle from class to class. Find out whoever the Winklevoss twins of your school are and steal their idea for a website <laughs> and shoot fireworks out of every bodily orifice you can <laughs> find. Do it now. Please make sure your college years are the best ones of your life because thanks to the debt that we are saddling you with, they almost certainly will be. Get out there and do it! <laughs>